Okay. So how does it work? Well, so I'm running it in auto mode at the moment. So this is your clock. Uh, the, it's basically you do that these days with a 555, just set in by stable. And hmm. Each time this pulses, it increments this row of counters by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, 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 blah. Each, each time that fires off, it powers one vertical row on the front for the programming for what actions to do. Yep. One of these. Yep. So as it steps through each one, it powers these vertical columns. And then depending on what pegs you got in, triggers the relays here to drive outputs out to your machine. Or in the case of how I've programmed it, completely destroy whatever you've put in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we're just kind of screwing around with it. But uh, yeah, since Julian's here, uh, I figured uh, we'd uh, let's put some kind of video up about this poor old thing, at least before I archive it or give it away to somebody. We should kind of a little digital logic version. It'd be about it'd six chips be... big. Well, that's right. You can replace it with something that fits in the palm of your hand. But these things are kind of cool because they're, well, they're tube-based. They are cool. Uh, if you want a one-shot timer, like uh, a single trigger, if you put it into one-shot mode and then hit the one-shot button, uh, you can actually see mm. the clock fires off once. So instead of it being an automatic clock, it's, it's just single-shot trigger. And you can see the tubes yeah, cycling through the decade counter there. Which is what this is. This is basically a decade counter, then you've got the um, the vacuum tube equivalent of silicon controlled rectifiers firing off good old fashioned mechanical relays. That's my favourite one, and that makes this whole it thing start humming. It lights up just about every light. I think some of them might be I think that card there, I don't think I've ever seen that card light up, but uh, yeah, that one. Uh, well, maybe. What haven't I? I'm pretty sure they all light up, but. Uh, Is it on yet? No. Nah. Uh, I'm pretty sure they all light up, but uh, yeah, once you get that thing cycling over, it's pretty damn good. And again, the power supply is also. Uh, Something clicked. The power supply is also. Um, One of these relays here. I think that's a coolant pump or something. So you've got coolant pump, you've got a hydraulic pump, you've got a yeah. few different. Uh... Nah. I'll just run quickly mm. through. <laughs> so that actually will run the timer really fast yep. without, um, without triggering the columns. And then, of course, when you stop, it'll trigger the column wherever you stop. Probably not good for the machine if you're running a, a job at the time. <laughs> well, if you do that, it won't, it won't run, run the columns. And the problem is, is you can't actually... Oh, maybe if you have the delay turned up. No. The delay doesn't count. I'm not actually sure how to slow down, mm. uh, skip through. That's why they charge like $200 just for the manuals for this thing. But you've basically got... Oh. That's your spindle speed. Spindle stop start, spindle counterclockwise, clockwise. You've got your other stuff like um, coolant pump on and off, but the top and bottom are your um, well, basically X and Y axis. There's no Z axis, but yeah, it's basically a turret lathe, which is automated by pegboard control rather than any kind of real, like, digital computer, I guess. Okay, so we've got tool back, tool in, I think, no, no rotate the post. Is that one rotate mm -hmm. the post? Yeah, that's turret. Then that's your tools. That's tool, yeah. So you've got um, forward-facing tool for facing, 
uh, rear mounted tool for like parting off or grooving. Uh, you've got that's your spindle, speed. Spindle speed. And then the, the tables up here for the various speeds for the spindle. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff for, for its age, for something that was made in 1960 something, 1970. And then open and close the jaws. Ah, uh, yeah. I uh, don't know was, what that symbol is for 20 cool this, pump. This didn't actually, the machine this came off did not have a chuck. It had a collet, a uh, hydraulic draw bar, so... It was made to be fed with a bar feeder and just continuously fed with just solid bar. There's no chuck, there's no human, basically human interaction between parts. It just does it, does it all itself. Which is kind of what these, um, a lot of these accessory buttons are for. It's basically uh, okay, your bar feeder. 23, 24 are triggerable here. 23, 24, 25. They yeah. were custom. Yep. There was a sticker there, but it's fallen off. That will be for, that'll be for bar feeder. So it was possible to actually put custom accessories in the program, but you could also run it unprogrammed. Which is basically What's main? just that, and then manually yeah. using your spindle well, that's, speed here. That's main, mo, motor on, or at least hydraulic pump on. And then you've got yeah, cycle start, semi-automatic uh, semi and fully automatic. And that's semi-automatic, that's stop. That should be automatic. It's in... Ah, it's still in single block mode. So that should interrupt it. Oh, there should be a single block mode and uh, or semi-automatic automatic mode, but uh, it's kind of doing its thing. These pins are a combination of diodes and resistors. I think the really white ones are resistors, the grey ones are diodes, but Actually, again... The white ones, I think no, sorry, the bands. The black bands are, are uh, resistors, the red bands are diodes. What about a no band? Uh, the band's fallen off. <laughs> oh. Oops, that one. I think I broke that one. Yeah, I think red band is a diode, black band is a resistor. It does make pretty noises. Yeah, the one that actually gets delayed depends on where I put these pegs down on the A, B, C and D. Exactly, it's... I worked out C yeah, and D are actually... Columns and rows. So, it's A and B and C and D all have the same resistance. And then C and D are combined on the peg, so you can have a longer delay than the maximum mm -hmm. of either of these. So it's one, two, and combined three and four. They could have just used a potentiometer with twice the value. <laughs> well, at least it's probably more fine tuning. That's the thing. It's a machining tool. It's a, it's, it's a turret lathe. You need. I guess the more 